Hello and welcome everybody, it is 2020, this is the very first achievement speedrun guide for Crusader Kings 2 on this channel in the new decade, and I think we should kick it off with a fairly rare one, one of the rarest ones actually, it is called Who Needs Vasco da Gama. Own all the Silk Route ports in India as a European Merchant Republic. Only 1.2% of players have it, it is a fairly lengthy achievement if you do it properly. Now we are not doing anything properly, that's not the business that we are in, so let's just jump straight into the gameplay to see how it is done. The initial decision that has to be made for all of these Crusader Kings 2 speedrun guides is always who do we play with and it wouldn't be a speedrun guide, it wouldn't be a speedrun guide on this channel and it certainly wouldn't be a speedrun guide in Crusader Kings 2 if we didn't start in 1241 with the bookmarked Rise of the Hansa and simply played one of the Mongols. Now in this case we will play the Golden Horde. Uh, what we need to do here is essentially be a merchant republic within Europe that is the but worded requirement, but it's not entirely true. And we need to hold nine counties. It's not important to have a trade post. That is just important that you hold those counties. Uh, once we're loading in here, what we're going to do is we are going to declare war on Georgia. Because Georgia is in possession of provinces that are bordering a sea zone. So in this case, the Black Sea. And that are also part of the Asia Minor... Uh, region because the Asia, Asia, Asia minor region is also permissible. I don't know why uh, because they frame it you know so fairly clearly where they say you have to be European merchant republic but Asia minor as a whole still works for this achievement. So what we do is we declare war for one uh, county, just a county conquest and uh, I think I, I like zoom through here a bit because my council initially was against me. If you just let a couple of weeks pass by once your troops, you know, marching down anyway, you can then declare war. I declared war for Abkhazia, I believe, and you take Abkhazia very, very easily. You have the Doomstacks, of course, our 100k running around just doing their business. And you're going to take down that particular county. And uh, you could take one of the other ones as long as they are in the Asia Minor region and are... Uh, province, you know, at the sea, but this one is the easiest one, I think. Now, what I show off here is essentially just, you know, I pillaged the other holdings, just leave the city standing. That is the important part. There is a city in this county guaranteed, just leave it where it is, don't bother with it. I'm pillaging the rest. Uh, everything else is fairly irrelevant. We will become a merchant republic fairly soon, but not quite yet, because what we need to do for the moment is we need to absolutely get rid of the Ilkhanid. You declare subjugation war if you don't have enough prestige, which you should have, but if you don't have enough, then just, you know, spam some titles you can create any at any point and uh, we will take over the Ilkhanid. Now be wary because this is the hardest part. The Ilkhanid also has over 100k troops. Be wary of their troops, don't march into any traps but as you can see here I got scot-free, you know I got away scot-free because the AI can't handle any of their troops and then you should be good to go. We're taking over the Ilkhanid so that we get access to India. It is fairly clear, I think it is fairly obvious as well. And with the subjugation war, we have a very much free war for this. Now the difficulty is that Satrap Hulagu is now our vassal and he still has 100k troops. I couldn't grant him independence right here in this slowed down scene or in this normal speed scene actually because he was at war with someone so I had to keep an eye on him. You do not want him in your realm doing his thing. As soon as you see that a faction is dangerous, that means he joined a faction and he is the only one that can properly threaten you. Everyone else is very much, you know, just lying down in front of you. Now what you can see here is I'm just, you know, converting. I converted to Zoroastrianism. I thought that would, might be cool and then I was like, you know what, let's just do classic vanilla. Let's just do good old Catholicism. So. I converted to Catholicism and so should you. You can do this by marrying people, by capturing people, whatever you choose. You could also become Sunni, but I wouldn't advise it, uh, advise it because the Sultan of Delhi is also Sunni, meaning you can't actually declare holy wars against them. Now what you want to do, what I also do here, is after you converted or before you converted, just convert in a time frame before you reach India. Uh, stack your council with people that like you. You just invite random nobles and then sort by opinion, put them into the council and they will always say yes. You need this so that you don't have to, you know, like, oh, make this and that vassal happy. Just do whatever is necessary to go through with it. And then all you need to do is go eastwards. Now I start here fairly slow. I start slower actually than I would have needed to. I went for this county only so that we get access to the next Debul to the India province. And uh, I could have done that, I could have skipped that, you know, there's not that big a problem there. I decided to just go with it, and I don't think it is necessarily negative. But all you need to know is every war from here on out is an absolute smashing victory. You cannot lose, simply because all of your troops are so powerful, you are sieging everything down within a couple of minutes. Now here comes the next important part. Take everyone out as you go. As you can see here, Debul is one of the important ports that we actually need. We don't need Sonda. And I was just looking around, how do we declare war the best? And as you can see here in this sped up footage, uh, you can't declare any proper wars against these people. Now, I was in a bit of a pickle here because 
What I wanted to do right here is convert to being a merchant republic, but as long as you are at war and I had a rebellion, you cannot do that. So, you know, just be aware you have sometimes, you have to focus on smashing the rebellions and getting them out of here. I could have technically already converted to the merchant republic before I even declared the first war against, uh, against the Delhi Sultanate, but honestly, it's not too much of a hassle. Don't sweat it. It's perfectly fine. All that matters is that eventually, after all of the wars are over, after all of the rebellions have been crushed, you can go and become a merchant republic. You can see here there was a second rebellion down in Persia. Don't worry too much. My armies are there smiting them. And what we do now that we are at peace, we go back to Abkhazia, we take a look at our wonderful city and we found a merchant republic. Because as a merchant republic, you keep every single piece of land that is settled. So all of the nomad lands are now independent, but we are settled. We are good. We're good to go. And we are now ready to declare holy wars. Nomads are not in any position ever to declare a holy war, but we can do this. As you can see here, they are now available to us. Uh, it's it's pretty free. It's a pretty free uh, land grab that we can now, you know, start uh, starting or beginning uh, to begin here. And that was, you know, nice uh, language usage right there. I know words, definitely. And all we need to know now is that essentially use the trade map. The trade map is your best friend for this because eight out of the nine provinces that you need for this achievement are trade posts at the coast of India. Eight out of nine. The ninth one is in the east in modern day Bangladesh. I think at least it is part of modern day Bangladesh. And uh, that is the west side of the river in that area. The right side of the river is already a trade post. So it is a marked territory and you can see here I skipped over Sonda. I just took this duchy immediately. And that was one of the duchies that we truly needed. And now here is another war for one of the duchies that we do indeed need. I just assault everything down by the way. You will go down to I think like 50k total troops once we're, uh, once we're done with this. Because it is a lot of assaulting. But at the same time it speeds the walls up so much. We're only five years in and we're only deep deep uh, already deep deep into India. And as you can see here, it's going splendidly. You just select whatever trade post you see, wherever you see a trade post, and then you declare wars. Sometimes you will have to, and this is something that you will see here in a couple of, uh, in a couple of seconds, sometimes you will have to go out of your way and actually break truces. Now don't worry about that, because you have an incredible amount of potential titles that you could create, which all cost about 100 bucks, because most of them are duchies, and give you 200 prestige. So the prestige issue, and you can see it right here, we will break the truce, because this person held, uh, holds two of the trade posts that we need. Now, I just, you know, broke the... Uh, truce and later on I will have to create some titles so that I can actually go ahead and declare more wars simply because you know that truce breaking does cost us so much prestige but it really doesn't matter we have the money to create more titles we have the money to get more prestige via that and then you can simply declare more wars more wars and more wars and as you can see here we're already at the eastern coast of India and now I saw a new target I saw a new trade post that I want that is the Duchy of Vengi I believe indeed it is and we just go in immediately now this is one of the more interesting runs with the Mongols, simply because we are playing most of this run, not as the Nomads, as we would usually do, but as the Merchant Republic. Once you took over the Ilkhanid and, you know, in, if possible, released your uh, Hulagu, the, the one with the 100k troops, immediately become a Merchant Republic, become any religion that isn't Sunni or any of the Eastern religions, and then go out of your way to beat them all up. And as you can see right here, um, you know, this for example, I couldn't grab the duchy with the immediate uh, trade post initially, so I just went to war for something else and then went on to declare yet another war against the same person. It's very easy, obviously, because you've destroyed their armies, not that they had any that would have been noticeable either way, but, you know, you just destroy them all and go through with the absolute victory. Nobody beyond the Ilkhanid stands any chance against you whatsoever. And you can see it right here, I have to declare another holy war, another truce break. Now I will have to uh, break the truce actually with the Sultanate of Delhi as well, but you could have skipped that even. You didn't even need to declare the war that I declared there initially. As long as you, you know, just settle and then do holy wars, you are absolutely golden. Um, there was a rebellion here. This is actually interesting. You need to be wary about that. There was a rebellion in Abkhazia, a peasant rebellion, that could have ended my playthrough had they captured me and just killed me. But, and this is important, uh, once you settle down to a merchant republic, the game gives you about 7,500 troops, I want to say. And you can see right here that I am creating titles just so that I get the prestige to break the truce. I even create some more than we actually needed. But, you know, when's the time to, to do this, if not right now? And as you can see here, I have to dru uh, truce break with a Delhi Sultanate or Khaganate, I guess. But, you know, honestly, what are they going to do about it? They cannot destroy us. We can immediately go here for the left side of the riverbank. 
uh, of the Ganges. As you can see, that is one of the problems that we need. It's called Kandrat Vipa, uh, Kandrat Vipa in the south. And once you take that, you only need the last territory to the east side of the river Ganges. And uh, that's literally it. With that, we are now here in a situation where the achievement pops up right there. It is who needs Vasco da Gama. Absolutely beautiful. Now, as always, I want to thank the members of the channel that make videos like this one possible, namely the Barons Aaron, Stefan, the Richest T, and Snywolf, the Counts, M.R. Mamello, I'm Deadpool, Kier Malik 2, and Suspicious Ducker, and last but not least, the wonderful Dukes, Nathan, Herman, Knight of Squires, Kenneth, Eric, Lexo, Benedict, and Roboman. Thank you so much for supporting the channel directly. If you're also interested in doing that, then check out the join button right underneath the video where you can see the membership tiers and perks. I will see you later, alligator.